You're listening to Boosh Radio. Boosh. Boosh. Boosh Radio. Your real talk radio. Daganang kilong kilo bedanin kong lo mo hum. State Affairs State Affairs with Edmond Obilo Knowledge is power, and there is power in books. At Odara Books, we sell books and disseminate knowledge. Buy books on www.odarabooks.com. Odara Books, out to stock your library and connect you to a new world of books. How could, how could 73 people be murdered in Benue State? They are going to be given a mass burial. You don't go. You don't send a representative. You And then... I, even in the uh, so in the social media today, people are saying, you know, the president is landing on a red carpet in 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 uh, Yobi in, da, in Yobi State. Red carpet. Here we go. State affairs with Edmond Obilo is live. Stay tuned. the presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress in the 2019 presidential election. Yes. What was the experience like? Let me tell you very honestly, Edmund, I never thought I would ever go into politics. Uh, about three years ago, I came home on holiday from my, on leave from uh, Brussels, where I was based, I was chief of staff of the African Caribbean and Pacific Group of States. I came home on holiday and found that my cousin, my first cousin, her late father was a younger brother to my father. Um, you know, the herdsmen militias went to their home and uh, butchered her and her two children. You know, literally cut them into pieces the way you cut salmon. And uh, it was a terrible, terrible uh, situation. And then she had lost her father just a few months earlier. So when I went to console the mother, when she just saw me, she held me as she collapsed. And she fainted in my arms. Now, I made a decision that day that I will leave everything I'm doing and I will go into politics. Even if I spend my last naira, I will fight this evil until our country changes. That is when I made that existential choice to go into politics. Um, it's been a learning process, if I may put it that way. Uh, I came third or fourth, depending on how you count the votes in the overall elections. Uh, for me, it was a great learning process. I learned, first of all, about our country, about our people, and I also learned about myself, my strengths and my weaknesses, and so on. We have a great country. We have a great people. Nigerians are wonderful people. We are among the most generous and the most wonderful people in the world. Uh, but of course, we have wicked people as well. Uh, people who don't want any good for themselves or for anybody. Uh, 
Yeah. Politics is very tough. It's about money, 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 money. Uh, and uh, once the, the he has former CBN deputy governor, they just rush to you. They ask you for this. They are asking for that. And I say, look, I didn't defraud anybody. I'm a humble pastor's son. I mean, my father was an evangelist. Even if I see the money, I wouldn't know how to steal it. So we are struggling even to find posters. So you know, people were even some of the people even abused me to my face. That they look at this. Yeah, they said this idiot. If you knew you didn't have money, why did you waste our time? Nigerians you know, said that to you. Of course, of course. Openly. You said we will disgrace you. You can't bring us here and then say tell us you don't have money. Eh? What rubbish is that? They didn't look at your intimidating credentials. <laughs> well, thank you for saying intimidating. But you know, to be honest, in today's Nigeria. Nobody cares about your credentials. They are immaterial. And uh, we'll tell you, not the grammar of a job. There are issues of uh, in stomach infrastructure and so on and so forth. Uh, but young people in particular, and my heart goes to young people, they are very different. Uh, they, 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 they want to be near somebody that they believe they can learn something from. And they need role models. They know that the situation that we are in in Nigeria is a very pathetic one. They want a change. And they are looking and hungry for, for change. And for that one person who will help lead them out of the bondage of Egypt. Uh, but it is difficult. Extremely difficult. You know, and uh, we are still trying to recover from the whole thing. For me, uh, it was a privilege and an honor, really, and uh, to, to, to stand uh, in the elections. Uh, but, you know, we'll see what the future holds. But it was a great experience, and I can tell you, we have a great country. I love Nigeria. It's a wonderful country. I, I love every bit of it, and I always tell people that God doesn't make mistakes. And he didn't make a mistake in putting us all together. Some people refer to the mistake of 1914, that the amalgamation was a mistake. It may, the British may not have known what they were doing, but I believe that Providence used them, you know, to bring us together. And it is for a purpose. The headsman crisis that provoked you into politics. Has Gwari yes. handled it well? Well, uh, I think they could have handled it better. If you look at the body language of some of these people, uh, they would never, 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 never raise issues about that. Instead, what we're hearing is, first of all, kettle colony. When that did not work, they say Ruga, uh, and then when that did not work, they say reserve areas and so on. You know, they kept changing the Gold Coast, uh, and that is very worrying. You may have come across some of these things uh, in social media that Obasanjo allegedly wrote, that Nigeria is being used as uh, a destination to settle all the headsmen of Africa. Uh, because they are tired of this, their wandering lifestyle uh, in the 21st century. All of them, they flocked to Central Africa. It didn't work. So they are coming back here, uh, and they've come with sophisticated weapons. They are killing, they are maiming, they are raping. And I don't want to use the word Fulanis. I don't like using the word Fulanis. Because to be honest, I may have Fulani blood myself. And throughout my childhood, I didn't like school. I preferred to be tending cattle with my friends, Lawal and Bello. When we were children, for me, that was paradise. So when people talk about Fulanis, I say, which Fulanis are we talking about? Not the people I grew up with. Wonderful people. Very friendly people. Very loving and beautiful people. I have nothing against Fulanis. What I, 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 I am against uh, these faceless, murderous, malicious. We don't know where they're coming from. You see, because most of us who speak 
the Hausa language. When you speak Hausa Kanu, we know you are from Kanu. When you speak, speak Hausa Sokoto, we know you are from Sokoto. When you speak Hausa Zazo, we know you are from Zazo. There are variants of Hausa? Yes, of course, of course. The, the accents, yes. Just like Yoruba, uh, the Jebu have their own accent, or your, or your people believe they speak the original thing. Uh, but it's a Lego, Legosians have their own very colorful uh, accent. So that's what I'm talking about. So when these people speak, we just know that they are not from Nigeria. They are imported killers. I don't know why they are being brought in, but imported knows, by who? Well, well, imported by all those faceless uh, power brokers who have their own agenda. To achieve what? And, and don't, don't, don't forget also that even during some elections, you saw it on TV, that even the president of Nigeria and some people came to Sokoto and other places, they were brought in buses during Nigeria's elections. That should tell you something. If you're just joining us, the program is State Affairs. I am discussing with Dr. Badaya Milafia, a former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He was the presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress in the 2019 presidential election. What is the present situation in the Middle Belt? You know, the closure of the borders has somehow uh, moderated the challenges. Uh, and, uh, but I can tell you until recently it has been horrendous in the Middle Belt. It has been a form of genocide by degrees uh, in southern Kaduna, in Plateau State, in Benue, you know, in Nasarawa, whole villages, hundreds of villages have been taken over, the people killed, driven away from their land, and they've taken over those lands, repopulated them, and even renamed their villages as they renamed the, renamed the villages. So what happened and to the are, displaced persons? Oh, well, they fled into their other brothers and sisters in the other villages and, you know, become internal refugees and so on. And this is what we are not supposed to talk about. When you talk about it, they say you are criticizing government. When you complain about it, you are criticizing people. It's because and you are hungry, you are looking for relevance. So who have taken over land? Who are these people that have taken over land? They are mostly foreigners, and they are murderous militias. This has been going on, and you know, there's even a conspiracy. The international community is silent. The Americans are silent. The British are silent. The EU is silent. We are not supposed to talk about it. Look, is that but why I, the Middle Belt is now moving across the Niger to align with the Yoruba and Igbo people? No doubt about it. It is because we realize that we are an endangered species and we are orphans because the whole world doesn't want to know about what we are going through. Our government doesn't care about us. In fact, there's even more hatred for the Middle Belt than before. Uh, Bishop Matthew Kuka recently said that in the current cabinet, there are only two Christians from the whole former northern region in the current cabinet. Only two. Does it matter? Only... The population of the Middle Belt is almost 40 million. And if you have only two uh, ministers, it matters. It shows that there's an attempt to exclude them from the national system of governance. No doubt about it. And I, 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 I thought you were a Democrat, that those things don't matter. They matter precisely because I'm a Democrat. Democracy requires fairness and representation. Uh, it is part of the democratic process. It's not about tribal or ethnic sentiment. But you see, um, in a democracy, you need to show fairness. You need to show representation. You need to show inclus inclusiveness. And where people feel excluded, then I don't think we are practicing democracy as, as we ought to. 
And uh, this is this is why we have thought deeply and we've decided that our destiny is with the South. Uh, uh, with, uh, we've been holding meetings with Lades and Digo, uh, with uh, Yoruba, and with Pandev from Niger Delta. Uh, because we feel that our destiny is with the South. Because Southern peoples have not killed us. How, how the Southern people have not maimed us? Southern people are not trying to take over our land. So we identify with them. But you have said that. Don't forget, don't you, forget. Okay. The Middle Belt, the Middle Belt held this country together under Yakubu It was predominantly the Middle Belt that fought the civil war to keep this country together. Our people are ancient warriors who were never defeated by jihad, who were never conquered. The British that came and then forced us to be subjugated under the caliphate. So we, we in the Nigeria of the future, we will stand tall with all the statesmen who will decide what happens to Nigeria's future and its destiny. We will never be second, play second fiddle to anybody. Don't forget that you said those occupying lands are not from Nigeria. So therefore, mm -hmm. they are not northerners. Yes, but, well, yes, that is, that is very true. Uh, but who is protecting them? Who is encouraging them? The Nigerian military uh, is fighting them. The president is fighting oh, them. Oh, when was this? Are there it's no new, armies it? in Taraba? Are there no armies in Benue? Well, the armies are there intimidating our, our own people. They have become an occupation force. In fact, uh, don't forget, it happened about the other Christmas. They said there was a curfew. The army came in. They went from home to home, disarming our people of their bows and dengals, bows and arrows and dengals. And then immediately they leave. They allow the same militias to come in and kill our people. Did you say allow or the militias came when the military left? Well, they allowed them because they, they would have known that they were coming. They is, would have known that they came because they heard gunshots. They did nothing. Is it not they guerrilla came, warfare, the way Boko Haram attacks, the militias also attack, sometimes taking the military on aware? Then, then why will you disarm one side and leave the other? Is anybody supposed to keep weapon? Well, then why would you allow others to come and kill others? That's what I'm asking. Look, my name, my love here means a man of peace. I belong to the Martin Luther King School of Thought. I don't believe in violence. I don't believe in, in the use of force. But I believe in justice. And I don't think my people have received justice. What is the way forward for Nigeria? The way forward for Nigeria is that we have to be, number one, very honest with ourselves very honest. There are power centers with hidden agendas. Number two, we must have an inclusive system. We must have a system of governance that is inclusive. And we must commit to non-violence and to social justice. Those who commit these horrendous crimes against what Nelson Mandela uh, turned an unarmed and defenseless people. Sorry about this. We must look at those people and their suffering. Because God and history will judge all of us. Do we need a restructured Nigeria? Of course. No doubt about it. Because these are the symptoms of what a political scientist, David Aptam, if I remember, called political decay. Aptam Huntington, a Harvard professor, political decay is when the constitution and the public institutions have collapsed. So that constitution 
must be jettisoned and we must go for a constitution that is based on we the people. Can't the National Assembly do that? Well, I have never found a situation where an emperor presides over the disintegration of his own largesse, the privileges, the benefits that the members of parliament get uh, is something they don't want to lose. And you can't rely on them to change a system that they have profited from. It's not going to happen. We need a national conference. We need a, 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 a genuine national conference on a new Nigeria and a new constitution that is based on the will of all the people. Dr. Badaya Milafia, thank you for featuring on State Affairs. Thank you so very much, Adi. Great nation, good people. I love Niger and I will like you. When nature calls, we answer. Bush Radio.